In this lesson, I'll show you how to find the speed required to shoot a satellite into space. The question reads, what initial vertical speed is necessary to shoot a satellite to 300 kilometers above the Earth? Now this question is very similar to one that we did previously where we calculated the escape velocity of an object that's starting at the surface of the Earth. And if you haven't watched that video, I'd recommend that you do because it goes into depth as to why we use the formulas that we do. And one thing that we learn is that to do a problem like this, you need to use the conservation of energy formula, which takes into account the kinetic and potential energy initially and the final kinetic and potential energy. The formula looks like this, where we have Ke plus Pe, kinetic energy and potential energy, initial is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy final. So we're looking for the initial vertical speed. The formula for kinetic energy is shown right here, and as you can see, one of the factors is velocity, which we'll be using to help solve this problem. We have half the mass times the initial velocity to the power of two, and on the right side, it's the same thing, mass times velocity to the power of two final. The expression for potential energy is shown right here, and again, in that previous video, I explained why it's negative. So if you're interested in that, you can watch that. I'll write down minus g, the mass of the object, which we'll call m, and the mass of the Earth will be represented as m sub 2 over the radius of the Earth, and that's r. On the right side, we'll have minus g, the mass of the object, the mass of the Earth, divided by the distance at which this satellite will eventually orbit the Earth, which is 300 kilometers. So technically, it's the radius of the Earth plus 300 kilometers made into meters, which equates to 300,000 meters. So I'll write down 3 times 10 to the power of 5 meters. The mass of the Earth and the radius of the Earth will be given to you in the question, most likely. And for now, it's not that important. What is important is the fact that we have this m and this m that is common amongst both of these terms and the same applies here we have this m and that m so if we were to factor them out on both sides you would notice that they would cancel out so since all terms have the factor m they would cancel out eventually in addition because this object is 300 kilometers above earth it's no longer coming down it's in orbit so the velocity or the return velocity v final would equal to zero. That means this whole term goes to zero and we don't have to worry about it. Suddenly, this question has become a mathematical one. The physics is done and all we have to do technically is solve for the initial velocity. Let me clean up this equation and show you how it's done. So I've rewritten the equation in orange and to solve for the initial velocity, I'll take that term over, this one right here that's negative, and by taking it over it becomes positive. So again, I have half initial velocity to the power of two is equal to negative gm sub two divided by its denominator plus gm sub two over r. To isolate for v, I multiply both sides by 2, and that cancels out the half here, leaving us with v sub i to the power of 2, and to remove this exponent of 2, I will square root both sides. So the exact same expression, but square rooted. As you can see, this capital G is a gravitational constant, and it's provided right here for us. In addition, the radius of the Earth is equal to 6.4 times 10 to the power of 6. And the units, of course, are in meters. So we have capital G, we have R. The mass of the Earth is 6.0 times 10 to the power of 24 kilograms. If you sub these values incorrectly into this formula, you should end up with an initial velocity being roughly 2.4 times 10 to the power of 3 meters per second. And there you have it. That's the initial velocity that you need to shoot an object 300 kilometers from the surface of the Earth. If you have any trouble subbing these values into this formula, let me know in the comment section and I'll be glad to help you. Talk to you later.